welcome to Witness, bringing you people's stories from all over the globe. I'm Rida Fakhri. After four years studying and working in London, Abdurrahman Diab wanted to go back to Iraq and make a difference. With not much more than his convictions and a taste for grassroots politics, he left his family and job and traveled back to his home village to stand in the 2010 elections. Today's insightful witness follows Abdurrahman from London as he returns home full of dreams, but soon discovers that politics in Iraq is not just dangerous, but also very dirty indeed. The Iraqi candidate. It's easy to put Iraq to rights, chatting in an Arab cafe on Edgware Road in London. Abdurrahman Diab wants to do more than talk, though. He's been in London for four years, studying journalism and working as a television reporter. But now, he's thinking of going back to his small town in Iraq and standing for parliament. He's a brave man. He served as a junior army officer under Saddam Hussein and for several years was part of a group plotting a coup. But Iraq is dangerous and troubled. It's a world away from the banks of the Thames. Why would anyone leave here to go there? I think that the political arena in Iraq needs for new blood. And um, since 2003 up to now, we hear tens of thousands of messages from Iraq about the achievements. But if you go to Iraq, you will find nothing, nothing at all. Abdurrahman wants to take the best of British politics back to Iraq, winning votes by delivering public services. His dream is to found the Iraqi Conservative Party, modelled on the British Conservatives. I am not taking the Labour Party because they invaded Iraq with uh, the Americans, so I wouldn't bring the example of Tony Blair Party. I wouldn't forget this beautiful life. But, uh, no, no hopes without being there. I have no other option. It would be a huge decision. Abdurrahman and his wife Noura have just had a baby, Hassan. But life's just too difficult in Iraq. He would have to leave them behind. Okay. There is no English smell here in this kitchen. <laughs> and Abdurrahman has no money for an election campaign. This smart house is just borrowed. He'd have to give up his job in London and rely on his extended family to look after him in Iraq. A few days later, with six months to go before the elections, Abdurrahman travels home. It's a probing visit, a chance to sound people out about his candidacy. If he feels he'll have enough support, he'll take the decision to leave London for good. هذه هي البيئة التي نشأت فيها وعلى هذا الأساس أحببت الوقوف على نهر التايمز في لندن لأنه يكاد يكون يشبه نهر دجلة ولكن هيهات لنهر التايمز أن يشابه هذا المشهد الجميل ولكن بعد عام 2003 وبعد أن ازداد يعني توسع القتل والطائفي في العراق والإرهاب بدل من أن يأتي نهر دجلة بكل شيء جميل Abdurrahman borrows a car from one of his brothers to tour the area. Dulaiya is a poor farming town of 50,000 people, two hours' drive north of Baghdad. Abdurrahman's idea is that he can win votes just by taking seriously the most obvious problems in the town, the state of his old school, for example. معلم بصفا والابتدائي. هلن هلن سوكم. سعد جاسم. هلن سوكم. 
انا ساعه مشرف علي وانا الان هاي من علمني حرف الملكني عبدا شنو هاي شو ها شو استاذ هذا يعني هذه السنه ما جو مطر ولا هي راح توقعي عن قريب حتى فار بيها حتى فار الله يعطيك الف ابو دياب مشتاقين وانا هاب نو ماني The campaign should be 100% reliable on uh, my own connections. So it's all about uh, meeting the people by myself. Okay, Abdurrahman drives on to catch up with some important voters. These men, the Awakening Council militia, known in Arabic as the Sahwa. During Iraq's sectarian civil war in 2006 and 2007, this area was controlled and terrorized by Al-Qaeda and other Sunni Muslim insurgents. Leaders of the local Sunni tribes, including Abdurrahman's own clan, resisted them. They organized a militia funded by the American military and drove Al-Qaeda off the streets. Abdurrahman shares the militiamen's hostility to both Al-Qaeda and the American occupation. مجموعة أحراش كانت موجودة ملتصقة بالجسر احترقت هاي الأحراش وحرقت الخشب وغرقت الجسر يعني مثل ما تعرفون أنه راح تصير انتخابات برلمانية Talking to voters like this might be normal in Britain Not here Most politicians stay hidden in the fortified green zone in Baghdad زين زين أعضاء البرلمان اللي مثلوكم بالمرحلة السابقة تعرفونهم شايفينهم Abdurrahman goes to test the idea of his candidacy on men gathered at the home of the most important tribal leader in the area, Sheikh Hussein Ali. Meetings like this will decide how entire clans will vote. The Sheikh sets the scene. The big experience is on the council of the Nawab. So now the Sheikh is the chair of this thing. The one who has knowledge. For example, the former Ahad بالاتصال بالناس ومعرفه الناس ب عندنا عاطلين عن العمل عندنا ناس محتاجين عندنا مساحه واسعه من الاراضي الزراعيه انتهت فيها الزراعه تحتاج المنطقه الى موارد مائيه تحتاج الى زراعه تحتاج الى فرص عمل تحتاج من يربطها بالعاصمه ويربطها بالعالم الاخر These people want action not promises but Abdurrahman has already delivered for them when he worked briefly in the Defence Ministry in 2005, he helped hundreds of young men from the area to get jobs in the new Iraqi army. His father is also warmly remembered as a clan leader. What is your opinion the election for the parliament and كان بالجيش وان كان بالدوائر الدوله فكنت انت العين الساهره على ابناء منطقتك فهذا شيء تشكر عليه الى الابد. يوم بعد يوم من يوم ما رجعت يعني ايمان يزيد بان يعني تحقيق الفوز شيء جدا ان شاء الله يعني قريب. It's time to go back to London, pack up and move back to Iraq for good. The decision means that Abdurrahman won't see Noura and baby Hassan for four months or more. 
He's resigning from his job as a television reporter and has no money in the bank. Oh. Maybe unbelievable to say that. I'm going to borrow the tickets, the money of my tickets to leave to Iraq. It's very difficult on our personal lives. It does have its effect on too. But for the best and the benefit of the country, I'm 100% behind him. This is why I don't care about the risk because Nora is <laughs> supporting me and she is positive. I always will, hopefully. The country needs men like Abdurrahman in this time. Days later, one of Abdurrahman's friends from the Edgware Road Cafe comes to drive him to London Airport. Noura and Hassan are already on a plane to stay with her mother in Saudi Arabia. And Hassan's pictures. And this is uh, when I say goodbye to him in the airport. <laughs> I'm Join me again after the break here on Witness. Welcome back to Witness. I'm Rida Fakhri. Abdurrahman Diab left his comfortable London home to stand for parliament in his home country, Iraq. But the cut and thrust of Iraqi politics is proving to be even dirtier than he expected. It's two months until voting day. Back in Iraq, nearly penniless, Abdurrahman is raring to start campaigning. But he can't. The official announcement of the start of the election campaign has been delayed. There's political trouble brewing in Baghdad. Exactly what is not yet clear. Then the crisis breaks. A body called the Accountability and Justice Commission bans more than 500 people from standing in the elections on the grounds that they're senior members of Saddam Hussein's Ba'ath Party. Sunni Muslim politicians protest that this is just a device by the Shia-led government to prevent any threat to their power. In Baghdad, tension rises. The army throws up extra checkpoints across the city, checking for car bombs. At any moment, political crisis could erupt into violence. In Dulaia, Abdurrahman is taking no chances with his own safety. He and his family stood up against Al-Qaeda and he's strongly aligned with the Sahwa militia. The insurgents are lying low now, but some still live in the town. Then Abdurrahman gets a phone call. 
شلون سلام الاسم مالي وين جاي؟ <تصفيق> والله؟ ها آه. هسه هذا التليفون اجاني انه انا مشمول بالشتات يعني طلعت من الانتخابات عبد الرحمن doesn't know exactly what he's accused of, but he was never a senior member of the Ba'ath Party. He was a major in the infantry. Like millions of Iraqis, he had a party card, but at the most junior level. Abdrahman quickly recovers and presses on with a lunch engagement, but his supporters have already heard about the ban. Abdrahman tries to find out what's going on. How did his name get on the list? But his is just one name among more than 500. The banning of candidates is now a full-blown political crisis, which threatens America's plans to withdraw its remaining 100,000 troops from Iraq. The US vice president was dispatched to Baghdad to convey Washington's concern about Iraq's latest political crisis. Abdrahman heads for Baghdad to appeal personally to the Accountability and Justice Commission. أنا أعتقد إنه الموضوع ليس يعني مو موضوع قانوني وهو موضوع تصفية سياسية ضمن المنافسات الغير شريفة يعني ويعني أنا عندي معلومة إنه في مرشح ثاني هو راح للمسائلة والعدالة ويعني مقدم معلومات غير صحيحة باتجاهه حتى يرفع اسمه من القائمة. There's time to kill before the appointment. The candidate who's trying to put him out of the race coolly rings up to see how he's doing. Hello, doctor. I'm in Baghdad. Well, in the green zone. The cafe isn't in the green zone at all. Abdurrahman doesn't want his rival to know where he is, just in case the rival is planning to have him killed. أنا ما أقول إنه هو دفع لي هيئة المسارة ولا عدم بس ممكن نكون دفع لي واحد راح كتب يعني تقرير كاذب للمسارة والعدالة أخذوا بهم بدون أن يدققون يعني أنا هاي مؤخذ تعليهم لذلك أنا يعني ما أخذ ال يعني ال ريكورد ما لي بيدي حتى إذا كوي شيء قانوني طلع يعني إذا ما كوي شيء قانوني يراجعون نفسهم يعني it's time to face the Accountability and Justice Commission. Their offices are in Baghdad's green zone, beyond blast walls like these. No cameras are allowed. Eventually, Abdurrahman emerges. <laughs> Abdrahman now needs to submit a written appeal to a panel of seven judges. He heads for an internet cafe run by an old university friend to print out his letter. I see the Kerem and Iraq and the Azmat Narakovichino and Abul Kadir. Just to remember it, Yanni. Lazmit out of Tibel Kadima, let's not. Belkatel Kadi at Lamath El Nada, it out of Uyana. There's nothing more Abdrahman can do now. He goes home to Dulaia to play with his nephews and niece and wait for the judges to rule. تعال عمور شوف حسن هذا حسن تعال شوفه هلو هلا نورا شلونكم كيف اخباركم راح يصير مشهور الصور هاي اللي بعثونا دي يصورونها الجزيرة يعني keep sending them علشان واحد يبقى updated مع حسن 
While Abdurrahman waits, in Baghdad, Al-Qaeda tries to turn political crisis into total chaos. Four suicide bombs in two days kill nearly 60 people, targeting hotels, a police building and a Shia pilgrimage. With little over a month to go before voting day, Abdurrahman drives to Baghdad and hears the result of his appeal. Then it's back to Dulaia. It's been a bruising few days and the official election campaign hasn't even started yet. واحد من اصدقائي بعث لي رساله <تصفيق> يعني كان ما يريد يخبر يبلغنا خبر حلو فيحكي عن احد المرشحين يقول مجتث فيعني ذيس از بوليتكس يعني هو ده يقول لي انه فلان تم اجتثاثه وخلص يعني انت خلصت من مساحتك <تصفيق> هذول الاطفال مستقبلهم مرتبط بالسياسه اخوك وصديقك وقاربك و... واهلك وناسك كلهم مستقبلهم مرتبط بالسياسه يعني كل شيء في العراق مرتبط بالقرار السياسي فاذا ما انت تمثلت به وكنت يعني انسان شريف تجاه هذه القضايا حقك يضوع عفوا يضيع وينباع ويصير يعني عرضه للمتاجره فانت مضطر ان تدخل بها بس اذا تسالنا نحبها لا ولا ما احب حبيب. That's it for this edition. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me next time here on Witness.